Welcome to Bloom at the Yoga Garden and thank you so much for joining me for this short class this evening or today or whenever you happen to be practicing it. So we're going to begin by lying back and down in Shavasana. Get yourself nice and comfortable, take the crown of your head or imagine you're taking the crown of your head up towards the end of the mat. Draw your shoulders away from your ears and imagine tucking them in underneath so you rest on the flat part of the shoulder blades and that will allow, help to allow your arms to rotate so the backs of the hands could be on the floor. Fingers just curling gently in towards each other, the heel of the right foot to the right edge of the mat, the heel of the left foot to the left edge of the mat. And just take a couple of rounds of your breath and allow yourself just to arrive on your mat. You've set aside this time for your practice and by doing so you're taking responsibility for your own physical, mental and emotional well-being. So I'm just going to read a little Thich Nhat Hanh um, well, meditation mantra to you and if you would like to you can synchronize your breath to it. So it's just literally about the breath. So if you want to breathe with the words that I say, just take a normal breath now and exhale completely. And then your next breath, breathing in, I enjoy my in-breath. Breathing out, I enjoy my out-breath. Breathing in, my whole body is harmonised with the in-breath. Breathing out, my whole body is calmed with the out-breath. Breathing in, my whole body enjoys the peace of my in-breath. Breathing out, my whole body enjoys the relaxation of the out-breath. Breathing in, I enjoy the harmony of my in-breath. Breathing out, I enjoy the harmony of my out-breath. And just return to your natural breath. Maybe you'll notice that it has slowed down. And maybe you'll feel that now you are actually on your yoga mat, thinking about your breath and almost ready to begin the physical part of our practice today. So the breath is so important in yoga. So if we don't use our breath in our yoga practice, we aren't doing yoga, we're just doing some exercise. So we really want to be mindful in our movements and use our breath to help us to soften into them. So we want to, our bodies to be free from tension, but we want to be strong as well. And we can use our breath to help us with both those things. So as always, listen to your own body. Don't do anything that I say that you know doesn't suit you. Pay attention or be aware of any injuries, any aches, any pains you have, and treat your body with respect and of course with kindness. Kindness is one of the most basic aspects or, uh, of yoga, so please be kind to yourself. So we'll just begin with a nice stretch, reach your arms up overhead, try not to let your shoulders come up as you do that, Point your toes away, reach into your fingers, big inhale here, and exhale. Just allow your hands to drift down. Fuck. <coughs> cough, <coughs> cough. Oh, fuck it. One of these days. So take a big in-breath, reach your hands up behind, stretch into your fingertips, tuck your shoulders down, don't let them ride up, point your toes away, 
and feel your stretching the full length of your body. Maybe for a little hinge from one side to the other and get a wee bit of a side stretch as well. Take one more inhale here and then exhale. Just allow your arms to drift back down to the sides. So now we're going to bring our right knee in towards our chest. Give it a nice squeeze and then just gently begin to encourage it over towards the right shoulder. So if you want to, you can place the left foot on the floor. But if you want to keep it straight down the floor, you'll work a little bit harder. So now I'd suggest we all place the left foot on the floor if you haven't already. And we're going to take our right hand down the inside of the right leg. Take hold of your heel, your shin, your ankle, wherever you can reach. Even use a scarf or a belt if you happen to have one handy. And begin to take the right sole of the right foot up towards the ceiling. So it's almost as if we're trying to get the right thigh down along the side of the right ribs. The knee and the heel are in line as far as possible. And we're aiming really to get the knee down on the outside of the right shoulder. So keep this left knee bent if you want to, or you can begin to straighten it along the floor. So it may not hit the floor if you're, you might be hovering a bit, that's fine. We're really focusing on this right side at the minute. So you'll feel quite a bit of movement in your shoulder, quite a bit of energy in your shoulder and in your thigh. One more breath here and gently release the right foot and straighten it along with that. So left leg in, exactly the same thing on the other side. Squeeze it in, give it a wee hug, take your hands to the front of the knee or wherever it is right and encourage the left thigh over towards the left shoulder. So right thigh on the floor, right leg on the floor or right foot on the floor, whatever feels right for you. So you can make this as strong or as gentle as you want. And then place your right foot in the floor, reach down, take hold of the shin, the ankle, the heel, wherever, or use your scarf or your belt and begin to take the left foot up towards the ceiling. So again, we're trying to get this left thigh down, almost down the outside or down on the left ribs anyway. Right, left knee coming down towards the left shoulder and your pressing into the foot and your hands sort of and foot are kind of working against each other and then if you want you can straighten the right leg along the floor and try and keep your, sh your shoulders rolling away from your ears nice and relaxed one more breath here and gently release the left foot Plant it on the floor, bring the, left, the right foot in as well and have your knees and feet hip width apart. So we want the heels ideally just so that you can graze the heels with the middle finger. Tuck your shoulders under, we're going to do set you band, a baby bridge pose. If you have any back issues, to keep your feet further away and obviously don't come up as high either. So we'll just do a couple of pelvic tilts before we start. So feel as if you're just like a nice rocking movement and then in your next inhale press into your feet press into your hands and begin to lift your hips towards your knees tuck your shoulders under and exhale unroll nice and slowly so try and do this with your breath as far as possible inhale lift your hips up your sternum's coming towards your chin, your chin up towards the ceiling. And exhale. Unroll. So watch your knees. Don't let your knees roll in. Don't let them roll out. This is a temptation. If we don't switch on these muscles in the thighs, that that's what will happen. So last one. Press into the soles of your feet. Press into your hands. Big inhale. Lift up. 
and really go for it this time. So take your exhale and then take another inhale. Maybe you lift up a little more, really feeling that sensation of lifting your breastbone to your chin and your chin up towards the ceiling. Big inhale here, keep breathing, lift up and then inhale. And as you exhale, feel as if you can imagine, feel even each vertebra unrolling onto the ground as you bring yourself back down. And then from here, you could either rock and roll to bring yourself up or just roll onto right side and bring yourself up and meet me in tabletop. So wrists below your shoulders, knees below your hips, pressing, actively pressing the floor of the way, the index fingers pointing towards the front of the mat. Fingers are well spread and you're pressing into the base of the index finger and thumb, the pads of all the fingers pressing into the floor. So you that nice little um, arch almost hollow in the palms of your hand. So we're going to do some cat cows, but instead of just doing them straight, the straightforward cat cows, we're going to inhale, drop your belly, stick your bottom up towards the ceiling, bring your heart center through. And then as we exhale, we're going to go over to the right, round your shoulders, chin in towards your chest, navel back towards your spine. And then as you inhale, you'll maybe be in the center again now, into your cow with your belly to the floor, bottom up. And then exhale, we're going to continue on round in our circle. So tuck your tail, chin in towards your chest, shoulders rounded and bring yourself back to center again into your cow. So we'll do one more if it was the other side. So we'll go left this time. So take another breath here into your cow and exhale, tuck your tail, chin in towards your chest and round towards the left. And then inhale in the center back into your cow pose. So it doesn't really actually matter which way you go or what you do. And then exhale into your cat. It's just about getting all those muscles and not even muscles, just getting your spine and your ribs nicely stretched out. So maybe have a wee wriggle about if you want to, if you feel you need to. So listen to your body and your body maybe say, well, I would like to do a bit more. Please do that. So now we're going to reach back with the right foot and leg and press strongly into the right heel. And then we're just going to take the right foot over towards the right, just to wherever's comfortable, and then slide it right back across the center and then see if you can turn and look at your left toes, sorry, right toes. And then back to center. And then we're going to lift the right foot up at hip level and reach forward as if we're going to shake hands with the left hand. So reaching into the left fingertips, reaching into the right toes, pressing the floor away with the right hand, strong right hand and arm. Navel back towards your spine. Look down at the floor just slightly in front of you. Not, don't have your head down, but you're not sort of straining your neck in any way. One more breath here and bring your hand down and your knee in. Other side, reach back with the left foot and leg. Give it a wee stretch. Take it round to the left and then back round to the right and turn and see if you can see your right toe. Sorry, left toes. I can't get my rights and lefts right. That's Irish. And then gently back to centre. Lift your left foot up. So you want your left hip in line with your right and your leg just in line with your hip. So you're not tipping over at all, hopefully. And then reach forward with the right hand and arm. Reach into the heel of the back foot. Reach into the fingertips of the front hand. One more big inhale here. 
and exhale, hand down, knee in, and then from here, we're going to step through with the right foot and leg. So a nice lunge, long enough to have a nice lunge, and you just feel a tiny wee bit of a stretch here. And then we're going to tuck the toes of the back foot under. Inhale, reach up with your arms first. Look up between your hands, press into the front foot, front knee and ankle in line, and then press into the toes of the back foot and just lift the back knee of the floor the tiniest little wee bit and down. Inhale up, exhale down. So you're not going for anything huge, just a tiny wee bit. You don't have to do this bit if you don't want to. And down. And then we're going to frame the front foot with the hands and step back with the right foot. Other side, left foot through. And again, make sure it's long enough so that, you know, if you're here, you're not going to feel much. So have it long enough so that you can feel a wee tiny bit of a stretch. Get your balance, have your toes tucked. Inhale, reach up with the arms. Look up between your hands if you can. Shoulders away, big inhale. Right knee at the floor and down. Right knee up and down. Last one, right knee up and down. Frame the front foot with your hands and then step back <clears throat> into tabletop. And from here, we're going to turn yourself around so you're facing the wrong edge of your mat. And if you want to, you might want to roll up your mat or put a blanket under your left knee, because we're going to do gate pose. So we're I'm going to give you three options here for gate pose. So sort of basic gate pose. So if you have your knee, your left knee quite close to the front of the mat, you've got a lovely line here so you know that you're in line. So you want the heel and the knee to be in line. The right knee and heel in line with each other. So this is where we would normally be with gait, or this is the easiest version, I suppose. Bring your right hand down the inside and then we'll swing up with the left hand in a minute. But if you want to go a bit further, you can straighten the right leg out along the floor and bring your, did I say right hand? Right leg out along the floor, right hand down the inside and you'll feel immediately a much greater stretch here down the inside. Or if you really want to go to town, turn your toes so that they're pointing away and you'll feel that all up. So you really need to lift the kneecap and this right leg if you want to do this one. I'm going to go for this one. So you're still getting exactly the same stretch with this. So we're going to rotate our left hand, bring your left hand up and allow the right arm to slide down or the right hand. So it doesn't matter where you are, just allow your right hand to slide down, but don't collapse, please. And then you can turn your head and look under your left arm. Use this arm to keep this knee in line so it doesn't roll in. One more breath here. And then bring your left hand onto your hip. Reach up with the right hand. Bring all that lovely energy with you. And fold over to the left. And maybe you'll feel you can maybe touch the floor, maybe not. But you don't want to be collapsing down to get to the floor. We want to keep the length that we have or had on that left side. So you can always use a block as well, but just keep your hand on your hip works too. And then gently bring yourself back to centre. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll do the other side. So swap over your support or your rolled up mat if you're using it and bring the left leg out. So same thing again. Have your leg wherever you want it, straight or bent. I'm going for this one and you still get a lovely stretch with this one. So left hand down the inside. Use the left hand to keep this knee in line. Rotate your right shoulder, bring it up. Fold it if you want to. And begin to fold over to the left. And if you want to, you can turn your head and look under your right shoulder. You don't even need to do that bit. So don't collapse whatever you do. Keep engaging all those lovely strong muscles. 
we'll begin heel here. And then bring yourself up, bring your right hand onto your hip. Bring your left hand up. So this is where you need to watch this knee that it doesn't decide to go wandering. Keep pressing strongly into it and hinge over to the right, reaching into the left fingertips, pressing into the left foot. One more big inhale here. And exhale. Bring yourself back down. Bring your left knee in. Turn yourself round back into tabletop. Tuck your toes under. <coughs> Excuse me. And bring yourself up into downward facing dog. And just give your dog a little walk. Lifting your sit bones up. So don't worry about straightening your legs or getting heels to the floor. Shoulders away from the ears and away from each other. Big arm bones rotating out. And then... I say walk your dog if you want to and begin to straighten your legs if you want to. Don't have to. Lifting your sit bones up, navel back towards the spine. And just let your head go. So we're not staying here long. Pressing to the base of the index finger and thumb. No pressure in the wrists. And then look forward and step through with the right foot and bring the left knee down onto the floor if you want to or you can keep it raised, your choice. Plant the left hand, swing your right arm forward and we're just going to windmill the right arm right. So you can do this just as well with the left heel on the floor. Change direction. So Turn your body too, so that you're not just relying on your shoulder to do it all. And then bring your right hand down. So we're all going to plant our knee now. Bring your right hand to the inside of the right foot. Heel toe the right foot out to the edge of your mat, maybe toes off the mat. And allow this right hip to open. So you can even bring your fingertips to the top of the right hip and encourage it to Rotate outwards. So you shouldn't feel this in your knee. And if you feel it in your knee, you're not rotating your hip. So bring your heart centre through. Press into the top of the back foot. Now either stay here. Or if you feel you want to go a bit further, maybe you'll come down onto a brick or a cushion or your elbows. You don't have to do this bit. So wherever you are, just let your head go and breathe. Strong stretch in the right top of the right thigh. So wherever you're feeling it, stay in your breath there. And of course, you don't have to be down here. You're still getting a lovely stretch if you're here. And you can let your head go. So one more breath. And if you're on your elbows, walk your way, make your way back up onto your hands. And then from here, tuck your toes under. Heel toe the right foot in. And bring yourself back into downward facing dog. And lift your hips up nice and high. And then look forward and step through with the left foot and leg, either right heel to the floor or keep it lifted, your choice. Press into the right hand, swing the left arm forward and nice rotation. So feel that you're turning right from the waist almost. Change direction. Notice how lovely this feels, does it? And then bring your left hand to the inside of your left foot. If your heel lifted, plant it down. And then <clears throat> heel toe your left foot out. Allow the toes maybe to come off the mat. Again, feel your rotating, getting this left hip 
out to the side and then stay here bring your heart center through and maybe let your head go or bring your elbows down to the floor or onto a cushion onto a block whatever and feel the stretch you can come onto the baby toe side of that left foot too if you want to gives you a wee bit more room And breathe into wherever you are feeling it. One more breath here. And if you're on your elbows, begin to walk your hands back. Bring the left foot in slightly. Tuck the toes of the back foot under. And bring yourself up into downward facing dog. And just walk your dog briefly, pressing the floor away. And then from here, we're going to just walk our feet forward, just whatever way suits you to get to the front of your mat or bring your feet towards your hands. Let your head go. And come into Uttanasana. So knees bent as steeply as you need to. Make a wee shelf for your chest to rest on. So you can have your knees, your legs straight if you want to. But we really want this to be a rest. So up, the whole of the upper body is like a rag doll. No holding. Just let everything go. Crown of the head coming down towards the floor. Feel a lovely stretch down the back body. And then on your next inhale, come into your flat back. So hands to your shins, your thighs, the floor, wherever. So no straining of your neck, just nice long head and neck. So Bring your heart centre through wherever you are. Big inhale and exhale, fold a little deeper. And then we're going to bend our legs even deeper. In fact, bring your feet maybe close together so your knees are touching. Press into both feet and bring yourself up into Utkatasana. Chair pose. So lift your navel up and back, pubic bone lifting, sacrum go down towards the floor and bring, keep your hands on your hips if that's easier or bring your hands up. So well done, this is strong. One more big inhale here, shoulders away from your ears, tell yourself I'm strong, I can do this, you're doing a great job, press into your feet and bring yourself up energetically. Draw that lovely air and energy down at your lungs, hands to your heart centre, and just stand for a minute. Notice your breath, allow it to come back to normal, allow your heart rate to come back to normal if it's raised. Take as long as you need. And then bring yourself to face the long edge of your mat. And if you have a brick or, well, it would need to be a very steady book or a low stool even might do, have it handy. So we're going to step our foot three feet, three, three and a half feet apart. And we're going to do Trikonasana. So we're going to turn all of the right foot and leg completely and turn the left leg in slightly. Turn your torso so it's facing the long edge of your mat. So you want to lift the kneecaps on the f both legs for that matter, pressing strongly into the baby toe side of the back foot. And we're going to reach up with the right hand and arm and imagine you're trying to set your right ribs onto your right thigh. So think panes of glass, you're trying to keep 
everything in line. Nice front open body. And when you've gone as far as you can, drop your hand down to wherever it goes. And rotate your left shoulder. Bring your left arm around and maybe you'll take a bind with that right thigh. And of course, if you feel your brick here, you can bring this hand down onto your brick. And if you want to, you can turn your head and look up towards the ceiling. So now we're going to bend the front leg and step your brick a wee bit further forward, press into the front foot and bring yourself up into a version of Ardish and So your brick is on the baby toe side of your foot, about a foot in front of your foot. <laughs> and I have no idea what that is in centimetres. Bend the front leg, bring your hand down onto your brick and allow the back leg to drift off the floor. So the brick is about a foot in front of the baby toe side of the right foot. Roll your left shoulder back so you're trying to get a nice flat body, a nice open front body. One more big inhale here. Bend your front knee, step back carefully and bring yourself into warrior two. So right knee heading towards the middle of the foot, shoulders away from your ears, lift your pubic bone up, stake them towards the floor and look over your right hand and smile. Well done. One more big inhale here. And then drop your hands down, bring your hands to your hips, turn both feet to the face forward and swap your brick over. So we're going to turn all of the left foot and leg and the right foot in slightly, lift the kneecaps of the left foot and leg and press into the baby toe side of the right foot. So you want to activate your arches. So my body at the minute is looking this way, but I want it be more or less facing the long edge of my mat. Right hand onto your hip, reach up with the left hand and arm and begin to fold over to the left. Imagine you're trying to set your left ribs onto your left thigh and drop your hand to wherever it goes. Rotate your right shoulder, maybe take a bind. Just bring your hand back behind or your waist wherever it goes. Just so you get that rotation of the right shoulder, nice open front body. And look up towards the ceiling if you can, or over your right, towards your, well, towards the ceiling. One more breath here. And then begin to bend the front knee. Have your brick again about a foot in front of the left foot at the baby toe side. And begin to allow your right thigh to drift up off the floor. If the bind puts you off balance, you can put your right hand up towards the sky. So one more big inhale, open out. Feel you're trying to stack your hips and your shoulders here. One more big inhale, bend your front knee, step back carefully into Virabhadrasana 2. Lovely warrior two. And this, these, these warrior poses are strong, so you're probably thinking, oh, stick with it. Well done. Turn and look over your left fingertips. One more big inhale here. And exhale. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn both feet so they're facing forward. Heel toe. Try not to look at your feet the way I did there. Your feet so they're more than hip width apart, but the width of the narrow edge of your mat, or the short edge of your mat. And then begin to bend your knees and bring yourself down into Malasana. So if you're comfortable here, 
bring your elbows to the inside of your thighs and hands together or keep your hands on the floor if your heels are lifted. Lift your heart centre up, safe and go down towards the floor and breathe and smile. One more big inhale here. And then bring your hands to the floor if you need to, bring your hands back beside you, lower yourself down and turn yourself so you're facing the short edge of your mat again and nice and slowly lower yourself down onto your mat. Well done. So we're just going to bring our knees in briefly for a wee rock. We rock from side to side. So that's a nice, strong, energizing practice to get you going. Take a big inhale and exhale, knees to nose or nose to knees. And gently release. We'll do one more big inhale and exhale. And then release. And bring your hands out to the sides, take a big inhale and exhale, drop both knees down towards the right, head to the left. Inhale back to centre, knees to the left, head to the right. Inhale back to centre, maybe give your knees another wee hug in and then gently begin to straighten your legs out along the floor, ready for your relaxation. So tuck your shoulders under, back to the hands on the floor, heel of the right foot at the right edge of the mat, heel of the left foot at the left edge of the mat. And take a nice long, slow, deep inhale. And a nice, long, slow exhale, sigh it out. One more. Inhale through the nose. Pause briefly, open your mouth wide and let everything go. And then just return to your natural breath. Make any final adjustments you need to make. Maybe roll your head gently from side to side. And then just take a couple of minutes to savour your breath, to enjoy your breath, to enjoy this wonderful body that is yours, this body that serves you so well, that takes you about and does all these wonderful things that you ask it to do. So just inhale and exhale. Just notice anywhere that you're feeling any particular sensations, maybe any little areas of tightness, any little bits of stiffness and see if you can breathe into those areas and just let them go a tiny bit more. One more breath here. And then stay here for as long as you've time. But otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye. So if you'd like to bring your hands together at your heart center. Thank you so much for joining me for this short practice. I really appreciate your company and hope to see you again soon. Let the love in our hearts guide the words that we speak and the thoughts that we think. Namaste.